Dude, I've never seen you with glasses on before. Well, if I'm going to read emails, i got to at least see what I'm doing. Then I don't squint and stuff. But uh, yeah, let me read you this email. Okay. And then uh, we'll take it from there. All right. This is uh, an email from Rob Chapman. Now, we asked Rob, um, we asked all of our fans that, are, that enjoyed the podcast to feel free to uh, chime in. And um, let me read you this email from Rob. I've been enjoying the hell out of the Real Guy podcast, in particular the fishing philosophy episodes. One philosophy I'd like you to uh, uh, discuss is that of the guided angler versus the do-it-yourself angler. I contend that fish caught while being uh, guided doesn't carry the same significance as one being caught on my own. And the email goes on and on, but uh, that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, but before we get started, um, I want to welcome everybody to the Real Guy podcast. This is one of our mini-series called Fishing Philosophies, and I have the shepherd with me today, Stephen Busaka. What's going on, y'all? Now, there couldn't be a better person in the studio today to have than Stephen um, for this particular Fishing Philosophy episodes, because Stephen just caught his first bonefish. A trophy bone, too. Uh, all bone, all, all, anybody that catches their first bonefish is a trophy bonefish. Touché. Whether it's two pounds or whether it's ten pounds, that's your first bonefish. That's a big deal. That makes it a trophy. That's something that you're never going to forget. It's going to be a story that you'll tell a thousand times over your lifetime. It's your first bonefish. It's a big deal. It is. You a know big, what I mean? It is a big deal. And I think Rob, um, the person that emailed in, and I'm glad Rob enjoys the uh, fishing philosophy, philosophy episodes. And um, any of you guys listen, if you have a decent fishing philosophy like Rob had and you want to email it in, it's jeff at lunkerdog.com. Um, we read all the emails and get back to people. And uh, if you have anything on the ball like Rob did, um, we got no problem discussing that. And um, now Stephen um, just got his first bonefish and he went with a legendary guide out of Biscayne Bay. And um, it was his first bone ever. And um, that makes it a trophy. It was a special moment, honestly. You know, I know it sounds kind of corny, but I don't know. Catching your first bonefish, to me, that, that's a big deal as an angler. You no, it's, know? A, it's a big deal to everybody um, that actually knows about bone fishing. Um, no, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Now, what do you think about Rob? Rob's point about catching a fish with a guide doesn't have the meaning or the same meaning of it when you're doing it yourself? You know, I was thinking about it when you first talked to me about it. And I'll tell you, I mean, he brings up an interesting point because some people might think, well, you know, it's it doesn't hold the same kind of weight because the guide, he knows where the fish are going to be. Right. You know what I mean? Give or take, you know, depending on, you know, how good the guide is and what the conditions are like. Right. But he knows where those fish are. So it. some people think that it might kind of take the challenge out a little bit more you're basically having the fish put right in front of you, so to speak. You know, and I get that. I totally get that. Now, what I would say, though, is this. At the end of the day... At the end of the day, you were fishing. At the end of the not day... Not the end of the day cliche. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know do, what I mean. No, people use that cliche all the time. And you were like, well, at the end of the day, I want to make sure you mean the end of the day, the day you were fishing. fishing with Carl. Yes, okay. but here's, here's what I want to say. At the end of the day... <laughs> You're still the one, because guess what? And even Lamont told me this too. At the end of the day, the guide can show you, he can put you right in front of the fish, but you're still the one that has to make that. In bone fishing, at, in that particular case, you're the one that has to be able to make that cast. Right. Carl can say to you, okay, cast it now, but guess what? If you can't cast it, that's not, you know, that's, that's not the guy well, that's on you. So you see what I'm saying though, right? No, I, I understand exactly what you're saying, but Busaka, you're, you're, you're a fairly young dude and you haven't been fishing that long. And because of that, it puts you in a category. You're in, you know, the learning phase, you know what I mean? You're trying to figure out what's going on. You want to, you're into that bone fishing and sight fishing thing. So you go out and you make a smart decision especially i mean it is a smart decision to get a good guide yeah especially if you're into it or if you're not from an area you know that you're familiar with yeah it's a smart decision and you catching that bonefish with carl in your stage of the game is every bit is 
Well, I should say it counts every bit as much as if you did it by yourself. Now, let's say you've been fishing for bonefish for 10 years, and you only go with Carl. It'll diminish. It'll wear off over the time. And oh, you, yeah. And you could, make, you could make the argument that do it yourself or would be more, have more gratification than going with a guy like Carl. But it's a, it, it matters which stage of the game you're in. Good point. Of whether or not, you know. It's going to hold the same weight. Right, exactly, exactly. Like once you know what the bonefish looks like, you know where they are, you know the tides, you know a lot, and you've got some experience. You know what to look for, you know. Then it's time to do it yourself. Yeah. And then you catch another bonefish for your first time because you did it yourself that time. And you, and you build, you know, you build upon the it's, achievement. It, you grow. You, you know what I mean? You build it's, it's upon growing. your achievements. Yeah. And your, and, your achieve, and your achievements change. So I don't think it's cut and dry. You know what I mean? Now, for me, um, you know, taking people fishing, you know, for over 30 years and thousands and thousands of trips underneath my belt. Like, I don't even think about it, that kind of thing anymore. You know, the do-it-yourself compared to taking a guide. But coming from somebody like you, I'm sure that's constantly on your mind. Like... You want to catch a bonefish, so you go down to the beach with Drew, and you, Drew gets two bonefish. That's fairly, I mean, that's crazy successful. You know what I mean? So, you you know, you're trying to accomplish that. But you also know that you're not going to have your own boat to get out there on the flats and pull around. Yeah. Even if you did have your own boat to get on the flats and out there to pull around, your success ratio would be very poor as, a poor, as opposed to going with Carl. With Carl, Yeah. Now, you take it like this. You go with Carl. You get your first bonefish. You go with him. You learn about permit. You know, you go with another guy like me. You learn about tarpon. And then, you know, you're five, six years go by, and it's time for you to buy your boat because you're into fishing. Yeah. Now, everything is, like, new again. Because now, now you got the boat. Now you've got the pole. Right. But guess what? You're not used to pulling and trying to sneak up on the bones. Well, you know, now you're taking on the workload. Yeah. You can absorb, you know, much more than you could have absorbed eight years ago before, you know, when, when you never, you didn't even know what a flats look like, never what a bonefish looked like. <laughs> you know what I mean? So now you go out and, 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 and you work and you get your own boat and now you got to do it all over again. The cool thing about that is all the fish that you catch that you previously caught, are now followed in the do-it-yourself category, and you can feel proud about that, and you can feel accomplished about that all over again. You know, hearing you talk about that makes me think about something else that I was listening to on another podcast, uh, Tom Rowland's podcast about chumming bonefish. And you know how you were saying, you know, we went down to the beach with Drew, and we're chumming them, right. you know? So my whole thing is this, you know, I mean, I, I still think is, again, I caught two bonefish, and the first one technically was chummed, right. you know? But after I sight casted it, the other one, I mean, I was kind of just like, I don't even really want to do the chumming anymore because the sight fishing was so exciting. You well, know what I mean? But not to say there's anything wrong with chumming. Yeah, but the thing is, is you know, and that's the old, that's the old you know, phrase everybody's using right now. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah. So when you caught the one when you were chumming, that was great because you never caught one. Yeah, so sight it was fishing. Like, this is cool. And it was a rainy day and sight fishing really wasn't the option and that kind of thing. So, okay, you catch one. You know, and while you're chumming, and then you catch one sight casting, and it's a natural progression. That one that you caught chumming the first day, that was a lot of gratitude involved. You were super happy about I that. I was. I was really happy. And then you work your way up to the sight casting one, and now you're happy about that. <sighs> and like this guy Rob's talking about, the do it yourself bonefish, that's going to be another accomplishment, right? Another, what do they call it? The uh, niche on your walking stick oh, or whatever? Or, yeah, another. Uh something on your belt or yeah, something like that you know some sort of cliche i was trying to get a decent cliche in there i saw and you get you got on me about using the word cliche <laughs> i didn't get on you about using the word cliche i got on you about using that cliche at the end of the day at the end of the day right i don't care if you use cliches i just wanted to make it clear i mean when you said that it, you know could have went either way I know I didn't think about it in terms of grammatical, cor political correctness, <laughs> grammatical, grammatical correctness. It's grammatical. Yeah, it's grammatical. We don't correctness. do politics on this show. We don't, and let's not start. <laughs> the, the the most political thing we'll ever get into on the show is conservation. 
but that to me is important. I'll crack on some of the politicians, like the way they look or what they sound or some of the stupid crap they come up with. We might crack on a politician or two during the podcast, but we're not going to get political. No. Like, like crazy political. But anyway, that's our fishing philosophy episode. Um, Rob, thanks for the email. We really appreciate that. And um, you guys, feel free to reach out to Jeff at LunkerDog.com. Um, I don't know how many fishing philosophy episodes we're going to actually do by the end. Originally, I thought of 10. Then I was kind of running out of fishing ideas. And then uh, every week that goes by, I get another philosophy idea. And thanks to Rob, we got even a fresher one. Well, I think we've actually done eight or nine of them so far. Yeah, I think, so we're almost there. <laughs> I, think, I think we're going to just take the number off. If we come up with a decent fishing philosophy episode, we're just going to do it. Yeah, why not? If I was going to say, if more people send us great ideas like that, why not? Right. So anyway, thanks for tuning into the Real Guy Podcast. I hope you enjoyed this week's fishing philosophy. Rob, thanks for chiming in. And we will talk to you next week. Shepard, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me as always. Run that dog. Run that dog. <laughs>